Because the MCAT's composed of scientific articles, it's really difficult, but also super important to separate what you actually need to pull out of the article to get the question correct from what is just fluff and it's kind of there just to throw off your timing. The flowchart method, which I'm about to teach you is how I do it. And it's a way to pull concepts out of the passage that are important and have been shown to be tested repeatedly, organize them in a way and a fashion that helps you get questions correct and make less silly mistakes. To do this, you'll focus on pulling out two basic things from each passage, basic sciences and relationships. My name's John, I'm a first year medical student, a 90th percentile MCAT score and a professional tutor for years. But today, I'm going to teach you a strategy that you can't live without. Before we start, I want to encourage you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And make sure to check out our passage breakdowns or our AAMC sample test breakdown playlist so that you can actually see some of these strategies apply. The three steps to mastering the flowchart method include understanding what classifies as a basic science in a relationship, learning how to organize them into a flowchart, and then getting better at it, becoming efficient. Because when you first start this, it's gonna take you a lot longer than the four minutes that you're actually allotted. But in subsequent videos, I'm gonna show you some drills and ways to practice and actually improve your speed. Let's get into the flowchart method. Step one, you have to understand what classifies as a basic science and a relationship. A basic science is what you're actually getting tested on when it comes to the MCAT. It's going to be any science that you remember from your big keystone courses in undergraduate like your biochems or anything that you remember from a test prep book. Those are going to be your basic sciences. If you're curious about how to learn and identify those, then make sure to check out our video on how to use Anki and Khan Academy to learn those basic sciences for free. Relationships is a little bit more abstract. It's the link between two concepts and I want you to focus on two things correlations and descriptions. This relationship could be an inverse relationship, a direct relationship, or it can even be the description of some random enzyme or medicine as a proton pump inhibitor. That stuff that you're gonna read in the passage is very important, and it's usually a clue to getting a question correct. But if you don't know what to pay attention to and what to ignore, then you can just get bogged down trying to go through the entire passage and end up highlighting or writing everything. So when you're reading through a passage and you're trying to figure out what's important, Focus on the basic sciences and the relationships. Step two of the flowchart method is how do we actually organize these basic sciences and these relationships into a flowchart? Your flowchart or just your notes should be easy for you to understand over the course of 10 minutes. You're only going to be looking at those notes and they're only going to be applicable for about 10 minutes. So don't worry about writing out long chemical compound names and things like that. This generally works best by really using arrows and abbreviations. Shorthand is gonna be your best friend here and any shorthand is fine, but just make sure that you keep a consistent shorthand for yourself. You're trying to create a system so that even whenever you encounter a passage that you've never read before, you're still going through a process that's very familiar to you. I'll show an example of a passage as well as basic sciences and relationships that I pulled out from the passage and what my flowchart actually looks like as I was going through that passage. You can notice that there's a lot of abbreviations and shorthand and that my writing is terrible. But on the real MCAT, you don't have time to write out a ton of things. So this is what I focused on. The third step of flow charting revolves around becoming efficient. It doesn't matter that you can pull out all the basic sciences and the relationships and do them perfectly if you can only answer half of the questions. So a lot of the magic comes at getting faster. For a slow reader like myself, this was pretty difficult because flow charting is going to take you a minute at first. When you first start, you're not going to be able to finish reading the passages and writing down your flow chart in the, the allotted three and a half or four minutes. It's probably going to take you somewhere closer to seven minutes and that's fine. That's why we practice. So to become more efficient when you're practicing your flow chart, I want you to do this simple drill. Work through practice passages with a stopwatch running beside you. Don't feel the need to rush. Feel the need to be accurate rather than fast. I want you to see how long it takes you to flowchart this passage. Document that, whether it be in a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper. And then the next time you practice a passage, try to get five seconds faster. You're going to experience some setbacks. Sometimes you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this passage took me a minute and a half 
longer than my average times. But as you average your times over the week, you'll see that the time it's taking you to read through the passage and create a flow chart is going to start creeping down by 10 or 15 seconds per week. And over the course of the two or three months that you'll probably be studying, that's gonna be more than enough to get you to the three and a half, four minutes that you need to be in. If you're kind of a data junkie like myself, it doesn't hurt to also document the discipline of the passage because it's gonna take most people a lot longer to read through a difficult physics or OCHEM passage than it will for you to read through something like mitosis or, or a psych -soch passage. So that's not necessary, but it's something that helps out a lot of people. Now it's important to say that most students will write down significantly more than they need to when they first start. You're thinking, oh, this dude on YouTube said something about how I need to write down every science I see and all these links and correlations, and you're gonna go a little bit overboard with it. You need to keep in mind the fact that everything that you write down on the exam is with intentions for it to help you score better. You're trying to predict their questions. You're trying to make notes and organize things in a fashion that you know they're going to be tested on. So as you practice, you'll start to learn the corners that you can cut and the ones that you can't cut. So it's very normal for you to write down too much and for your time to be a little bit longer. But if you shave off just five seconds, every single passage will soon be at your goal. Again, if you want to see this in practice, then check out some of our AAMC sample test passage breakdowns. The CP and the BB ones are probably going to be your best bet to really see it in action. One last important little caveat is that if you are testing in one or two weeks and you're just seeing this video, do not change up your testing strategy this close to your test day. This is something that's going to take probably a month for you to get faster at and probably two or three months for you to really master. So if you've only got a week or two, then just stick to what you've been doing and trust that you're a pretty smart person if you got this far and think that you can still be a doctor or consider pushing your test back and trying out something like the flowchart method. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments how this actually works for you.